Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Seed Story Cup number three, powered by Tag TV. And now here, my co-caster now is Toyda. Hey, man, and what's up, man? Welcome to the stream. I hope you're feeling lucky and good today, because we are going to see a great match. It's Nimsh against Dotar. Yeah, well, the Polish battle. The Polish battle, if you want to call it that. And yeah, we had some crazy series in this, in this group already. We have seen uh, Lothar lose to Ignite playing his Freeze Mage. And Ignite really on a hot streak. I want to oh, say yeah. that once more, really playing them very, very well. Oh, he's very well prepared. I like the deck selection. I, it, he has a good plan. Like It's not like you just threw some decks like some people actually did, but he has a plan to slaughter some. Setups, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Do you have a favorite for this match here between Nimsh and Lothar? Not really, I think they're Not really, yeah. even Battlefield. I think so too. Let's go once over the classes. Lothar picks Druid, Hunter, Mage and Warlock. The Druid is banned though, so Hunter, Mage and Warlock left for Lothar. Nimsh on the other hand has Druid, Mage and Voria. The Hunter was banned. So, uh, when we take a look at that, I guess Lothar plays a Mech Mage. We have seen that in the series before. Uh, Nimsh also playing Mech Mage, I guess. Yeah. We so there's not really. Well, the Warlock is pretty decent against the Druid. Yeah, it's hard to just. I think it's still even. Yeah, it's pretty even. But Lothar uh, picks his Mech Mage and runs into the Voria of Nimsh here. Definitely a good matchup for the Mech Mage. We have to say. You think so? Yeah, no, I think it's even. You think I it's think even? Maybe even slightly favored for the Warrior. Okay, I have uh, I've seen a lot of Mech Mages uh, win over Warriors, and personally, when I am playing Warrior and going up against a Mech Mage, I don't feel too confident. Well, it's all about that Fiery Win X, I guess. <laughs> yeah, the Fiery Win X. As we see, there's no Fiery War X in Nimsh's hands so far, so as you already said, it comes down to a certain point where you really need that. Also, very crucial for the Mech Mage is do you get the Freeze on? Do, do you have. Do you get the Freeze? Um, do you get the, the, the Mech Warper? Then for the warrior, it's basically those two spots where you get the fire warriors. Or if you don't get it, do you get the brawl instead? So those are the two turning points in the match, I guess. Exactly. Nims decided though to replace the brawl here. He had it in his hand. Oh. I and think it's a good choice. Yeah, it's a choice because you want to draw into something early on. And now there, there goes the cruel taskmaster. That's an answer to Clockwork Gnome. <gasps> and wow, there it goes. But we could also already see a uh, coined out snow chugger if Lothar feels lucky here. The risk by doing that is if you run to that fiery war X, it gets taken out. It gets taken out and you throw yourself off curve. Like that's that's the thing, like I, I totally support playing a chugger here if you have something like a mad scientist to follow up. But like if you place chugger here, what's he gonna follow up with? No clockwork no. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> it makes your turn too awkward, but if you get the freeze on as early as possible, you deny the the warrior to de, uh, to develop his uh, his weapon game. Yeah, of course. So that's the thing. Uh, Lothar is also taking his time about this turn, so that might be thinking about either sticking to the curve, as you pointed out, or getting the freeze on early. And as he is roping, he has to come up with a choice very soon. It's a hard choice, but I think like with the composition of the hand, I think you have to go for the clockwork. No, I think there's no other choice here. Yeah. That means, on the other hand, that he will probably run into that cruel taskmaster that we are just about to see coming down. Nimsh goes for it very quickly here. Uh, it's some kind of no-brainer takes out that clockwork gnome, and it will be once more Lothar's turn here. Let me just use snow chugger. This time the, snugger, uh, the snow chugger comes down. So now it all depends if like Nimsh can curve out. Like the armor is off curve, but still better than nothing. Yeah, I also prefer the armor smith here over the hero ability because you set another minion on the board and so much in this matchup is about board control. Always when you play against the yeah. mech mage, board control is so important. Yeah, I see, I see you're signing the trade into that. It's like... Yeah, he's preparing that trade with the armor smith. Like he's just trying to evade the frostbolt maybe, I don't know what the actual reason behind it is. So here, what do we see? Probably a Tinker Town. Yeah, I would think so too. Even though you could expect it's turn four upcoming, you would probably set the freeze. So Tinker Town technician definitely is the right choice here. Like the time binder is is, is is an odd spare part for the Mag Mage. Yeah, 
uh, really. But the Tinker Town Technician is another 4 4 body on the board, and without the Death Bite, without Execute, without Shield Slam, there's no real way here for Nimsh to deal with that. And you're just building more pressure on the board, and that's exactly what the Mag Mage wants to do here. Like, like, like the question is that I'm asked, sorry, I'm interrupting. Sorry, no I'm, problem. Like, I'm trying to follow his thinking process. Like, is he playing Tinker Town and then is maybe bouncing the Snow Chugger here? I mean, yeah, that's something to s to think about because keeping that snow chugger is very important. So you could really think about coin time reminder. Even though if you do not want to play the snow chugger next turn, you still have turn yeah, four yeah. coming up with the piloted shredder and yeah, uh, yeah, with the piloted shredder. So uh, that's something to think about here. Wow. Lothar's roping. He's running. I would out actually of like it. I would like it. And yeah, you can also go for okay, an okay, armor no, no, plating. No, 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 you can do that as well, of course. Yeah, and you leave this chugger on the board. Gives so you more tempo. But now Nimsh has to draw a Shield Slam or an Execute. And with that Shield Slam, he can just use his hero ability and Shield Slam the Snow Chugger if you want to. Well, let's be honest, like there's no other play, there's nothing to do. And then, like, it's 5, 6, 7, 8, it's kind of filled, right? <laughs> well, let's be honest, okay? There's no other play, Nimsh, go for it. Please hurry up. Hurry up. <laughs> Is that what you want I mean, to say? Like, <laughs> I mean, like, look at his hand. He's not going to play it on turn 5, 6, 7, or 8. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Yeah. He has a nice curve with the Sludge Belcher, with Sylvanas, Dr. Boom, and Ragnaros. I totally agree to that. But Nimsh might also think about, okay, Lothar now has this board with the Snow Chugger, with the Tinker Town Technician. So what com might come up next? What might I draw into? What happens if I draw into that Death Spite? Am I going to play it? So you you always have to think about, because your time is limited. Of course. You got one minute 30 for, for a move. No, no, like he's taking that one minute 30 for the next turn now. But that's what you're saying. Exactly. You, yeah. The thing is, you're limited. So every time you can take your time and think about the moves, you you should maybe do that and maybe plan on some further turns. I think that almost every player here does that. Like, think for like two to three turns ahead, you should do that. Exactly. And I think that's the reason why Nimsh chooses to rope here and will in the end go for the shield slam. Takes out the snow checker, so he denies some freeze. At least for for now, if Lothar does not draw into the second snow chugger, we do see the spider tank. That's also very nice. Uh, if you lose your piloted shredder, maybe you can set up the Anoitron with the spider tank. Have two max out, then the goblin blast mage following that up. Still have the frost bolt if you immediately if, if you immediately need some freeze on the face. Yeah, so but, but I think this is a clear piloted shredder. And yeah, yeah, and sure. And no, 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 no doubt yeah. about that. No doubt, no doubt at all. Uh, but still, I expect Tinker Town Technician to run into the armor smith. Of course, just like, 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 just imagine like he, you to go for face, be greedy. Like, it doesn't make any sense. Like, he drops a belt next turn. You expect the warrior to do that, right? Exactly. And in the end, he gets more armor than you want him to get. So that's why. Oh, we even see the second Sludge Belcher coming in here. So Nimsh has the choice which Sludge Belcher to play. He goes for the Fresh Belcher. And can now think about maybe using his hero ability trade in the first trade in the shredder. Look what comes out if you want to. The other play is probably to just run in the Tinker Town and Blast Mage. I would like that as well. I think both plays are fine. Well, it doesn't really fit the curve, so that's the, the th that's the thing here. You can go Spider yeah. Tank and Hero Ability and have the Blast Mage still in your hand. Mm, I prefer that way because. You're on five mana, and it just works out so perfectly. I think Bob is fine. I could, like, yeah. now it's a, it's a clear ping, and oh, you could blast match actually. Now that you got the Robo Cup out of it. <laughs> yeah, you you could still go for the blast <laughs> match if you wanted to. Yeah. But Lothar fancies the spider tank. He goes for the fire blast. His hero ability takes out the sludge belcher here. It will now also take out the slime with his Tinker Town technician. And wow, that's a nice draw though. Uh, Nimsh draws into Emperor Thoris, and but it has to come down. Really? I think so. More than Sylvanas? Because Sylvanas is always putting a threat on the board. It's like, okay, I'm gonna. I mean, you have six, seven, and eight, right? I mean, Sylvanas is fine. Like, you have still time to play it here. Fine. Yeah, because you are not gonna get any immediate value out of that. Uh, Emperor Thorison here. Not really. Because you're gonna play one minion each turn, and you can't expect your Thorison to survive a lot of turns, but... The thing is, the Thorison has taunt. That's the difference with Sylvanas. Yeah, it's it's taunt in some way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's the thing. So he goes for it, and now I would love to see the Blast Match maybe also the trade first, because you don't want the Blast Match to hit no, more than needed. I think he frostbolts now. 
I would keep the Frostbolt, honestly. Maybe. Or, yeah, it's it's nice to use it on the trade here. And we haven't seen a weapon in the whole game, actually. That's nice. something special. Nimsh did not draw into any weapon here. That's a very unusual game there. And on Nimsh's point here, what do you want to draw except the Brawl? Is there what something else you really need? But I feel like he desperately needs the Brawl in the next few turns, because otherwise there's just too much pressure here for Lothar on the board. I can't really see what you want. He to has do. got 14 damage each turn incoming. I mean, he could drop Belcher, Armor of Shields, and the Tinker Town, which is horrible. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Toida is suggesting horrible plays here. <laughs> like, maybe the Emperor was just too slow. Maybe he should have dropped Sylvanas. That's what I we talked about so. earlier. I think so. Even though Sylvanas is not an immediate uh, take out because you have to deal with, with the Emperor Thorson, but Sylvanas puts the threat on the board that you destroy the board position by the Mag Mage. So that's the thing why I would have fancied Sylvanas here. But but still, <laughs> you could also think about turn 7 Yolo Rag. Maybe get a lucky hit on the Blast Mage. Well, actually, Rag might be his best play. Like, let's be honest. Yeah. <laughs> Like it, like, it reduces at least 2 damage. Let's say it doesn't hit the face, right? So he's up with 12 damage. So you're not dead to a fireball. The, f the Slash Belcher thing is like, I feel it's just... It's a losing play, just to lace your death. Exactly, that's it. He goes for Sylvanas now, so maybe regretting to play Emperor Thorson. As I pointed out, it's, it's nice to have the reduction in your hand, but it, he doesn't really get any value here. On turn 10, he could play the, the Doctor Boom with a Slash Belcher, but... Is he gonna survive until turn 10? That's the big question here. I mean, like he's saying, I drop Sylvanas and I top deck Brawl. <laughs> That's what he's saying. Yeah, maybe. Um, I know Nim, she's not number guy. You know, number guy always says, okay, I will draw into that and I'm 100% sure. Nim usually takes his chances and really thinks about uh, what's coming up next and oh, how many cards are left? 20 cards left. Are you, are you calling that Brawl? Are you really saying Nimsh is, is drawing the, the brawl here? Well, I try to trust in Nimsh. Just he do he it. can do it. That's the thing. If you make those awkward calls, you are going to hit once in your life. Or maybe... I mean, maybe twice. Yeah, yeah. Or, or three right. times even. But you just have to do it all the time. And sometimes it, it goes right. Because nobody is, is looking at you like, okay, what did you call there? Okay, it goes wrong, so that's no big deal. But if you call it and it's actually right, then you're like, wow, how did you call that? How did you call that? <laughs> Look, there comes the brawl. And there we go, no brawl, but so it doesn't matter. You know, we so didn't expect to see that. So let's see. Okay, you could go for the Shield Maiden here, then enable your Shield Slam. You could also use that on your own Sylvanas, maybe take out the, the Robo Cap if you wanted to. What, you want to Shield Slam your own Sylvanas? Uh, I'm just uh, thinking about <laughs> it loudly. You could co could also take yeah. out the Tinker Town Technician. You drop the Belcher here and kill the, the uh, Robo Cap. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely better. So let's see. Ragnaros. <laughs> <laughs> the Ragnaros? Yeah, I am just uh, thinking if Ragnaros could set up a 50 50 lethal, but it's impossible, impossible here. Impossible. And so I just expect him to go for even more board presence. Uh, could go Pilot or Shredder with Clockwork Gnome. Maybe he goes no. full, full, full mode, full mag, full mag warper into Clockwork Gnome into Pilot or Shredder, pink to the face, and just. And then comes the Brawl. And then comes the Brawl. Brawl is. Still good. Oh. It's kind of the only out. There's nothing. There's no win potential without the brawl next turn. What to do? Mm. No, actually, no, actually, you don't want to top deck the brawl. You want to top deck the shield block into the brawl. Shield block into brawl. Okay. <laughs> Let's see if that's going to happen. First of all, the hero ability to Nimsh's face dropping down to 8 HP here. And there's the big game hunter. So not quite hitting with your prediction oh. here. And unfortunately, how can Nim survive that turn? Um, he can't. There is 14 damage on the board of the Mag Mage. He can heal up to 15, but we also have the Three, hero ability. Eight, nine, 11, there is no way. If he plays the shield man here, the game is lost. If he goes for Ragnaros and it's sound up and he hits the blast mage that's the best outcome there's here. two more health then he's on one over that yeah that's his best bet i guess 
No, but then he's still there's too much damage. There's ten damage on the board, and you're right. ten six, HP. So. Six. Yeah, that's right. There's and there's there's no out. No, there's there's no play. Jim uh, Nimsh just desperately, or maybe there's a chance we did the miscalculation here. But that's fifteen damage on the board. I see. Yeah, and yeah. that should be lethal. Lofer just has to do it. Just has to do it. He swings to the face with the Blast Mage. Also swings to the face that with the Piloted Redder. Then the Mac Opera comes in, the Spider Tank. And the Neutron to close it all out. Yeah. The BM with the Neutron finish. The BM. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, if like, he wants to see it like, like that. Look at that Blast Mage. How much damage did that do? Yeah, five damage. Yeah, okay, overall, you mean, in the whole game. Oh, seriously, it was so... Incredible damage here. Lothar goes up in that series with 1-0 here over Nimsh, and that means Lothar's mage is eliminated from that series. So if Hunter and Warlock left. Hunter and Warlock left. Going up against Mage, Warrior and Druid, I feel like I would go for for the Warlock here. I wouldn't want to run my Hunter into Nimsh's Warrior once more. I like that. I like that. Yeah, you like that. Okay. After thinking about it for a while, he also agrees that Lotus should maybe go with with his Warlock. And we are jumping into the second game, ladies and gentlemen. So prepare to see some more crazy Hearthstone. And there we go. It's the Warlock going up against Jaina Proudmoore, the mage. That's going to be interesting. And it's a demon lock. We can say that by now, seeing yeah, the course. Void Caller. Yeah, and of course, it's demon lock. It's just so popular. Look at that. Double clockwork now. Okay. He will <laughs> Going first, obviously. Going second, you keep both. Double more to call. He he gets one of them away. One is enough. And that's that's the best answer here to clockwork now. And it feels so bad for the Mac Maid. Going clockwork now. And now he is like, okay, I, I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready. Yeah, no, clockwork now. Let's start the game. And then more to call. Okay. Lothar, on the other hand, he draws into an ancient of, uh, ancient watcher. Nim has a frost ball. The Neutron. At least it's a max, so you can prepare for your Tinker Town Technician. Following that up next turn, the Iron Beak all is also pretty nice. I but think you watch it here. Yeah, I also think you. It gives you options. Yeah, we were talking about it. Board presence is important in that matchup, and the watcher with that Iron Beak all. Is setting up some some board presence. It's a four five. It's a yeti. It's a yeti. Could, it could be a five six taunt. It's also pretty nice that he has. If he plays the watcher now, next turn iron big owl, then you can uh, go for void caller. And once that lord jaraxus comes out, and you can play the defender of argus, that's gonna be a four sixteen taunt. There's only one way around that. And which way? Reversing switch. Reversing switch. And we already see it in Nimsh's hand. So that's interesting here. Yep. And I totally think he will gonna keep. Uh, he's going to keep that until we see Lord Jaraxxus maybe come out, because there's no reason to early on play your s reversing switch. And Lothar roping again. The chat was saying roping Lothar. Well, he's learning <laughs> from life coach. So. And he draws into the second ancient watcher. So now, as predicted, we see the Tinker Town Technician coming down. He gets a walling blade by by playing that. The Mountain Giant is drawn here for Lothar. Unfortunately, well, you can go for the Ancient Watcher just here. Play it now, next turn, Mountain Giant, if you want to. Well, I think, so like, at this point, I would probably go Double Watcher with the Argus in hand. That's also a possibility, just not go for your mountain giant. The mountain giant is just lower. There's a Neutron on the table. Yeah, that's the thing. But you have the owl to, to maybe... You don't want to owl that. That's the thing. So Ancient Watcher into... Well, double Ancient Watcher into Defender of Argus is a very safe play here. You're setting up two big taunts, 5-6, yeah. denying some damage incoming here. I also like that play. Well, the chat is demanding a coin mountain giant. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we should talk to Lothar now. Please play Count Mind, uh, yeah. Count Mountain Giant. It's it's uh, such a nice play. It's even better than Coin Mind Blast on turn one. Oh, oh well, Pyromancer unleashed downs. Oh, that's that's so nice. <laughs> I had to play that once. It was the correct play. Really? Yes, I needed to trigger. For the you needed to trigger and yeah. had to play. Oh, yeah. Did it feel bad at least? No. Well, <laughs> I won the game. 
<laughs> okay, okay, you won the game, but think about all the doggies. All them doggies. They all had to die just because you wanted to win the game. Anyway, we see the double watcher play that you suggested. Nimsh is drawing into Archmage and Knight is here. He has two spare parts. But he can maybe now think, okay, probably Ancient Watcher that suggests, okay, he's gonna maybe play Sun Fury Protector or even the Defender of Argus, which is even better here. So what do you do? <laughs> yeah, you still go face. And you and you still play a Shredder because you're a Mag Mage. That's it. <laughs> but you could you could think about okay, he's setting that up and I could trade into one ancient watcher already, maybe because anticipating that Defender of Argus, but nobody plays around Defender of Argus, so Mech Mage's turn is is pretty clear here. Follow the shredder and just swing to the face. Yep. You have a straightforward game plan. <laughs> <laughs> the whole game plan is go to the face or what? <laughs> <laughs> I mean like should we call the Mech Mage should not be called Mech Mage anymore? Instead, it should be called Phase Mage. Ah oh, no, there's just another deck that's called that you can call Phase Mage. Anyway, Ninja draws into that second Annoyotron. But no, that's that's awkward. Two, five, six taunts. That's slowing the game down so much here. I think it's tempting here to use your spare parts. I agree. Or at least one of them and like actually you could use both and clear with a ping. And the Neutron. And one of the But you got Archmage and the Nidus in your hand. Yeah. Well first let's see what comes out of the shredder. Maybe you a get the Doomsayer. <laughs> <laughs> Direwolf? Direwolf? Also a possibility, but what comes out is just an Argent Protector. And we see the Fire Blast taking care of the first Ancient Watcher. We could now see the reversing switch if you want to do that. You could also follow that up with a Cogmaster. Uh, that's an interesting turn. We could see a Frostbolt here. Could see a Cogmaster. Nimsh is running out of time. He has to hurry up with that play. And he just plays the Cogmaster and ends his, and ends his turn. So now this is the Twilight Drake is actually pretty nice here. On the other hand, you want to play that Void Caller as well. That's the thing. You want to play the Void Caller as well. Next turn it could be another turn for the Mountain Giant because you will have probably six cards in your hand. Uh, enough cards in your hand that it, the Mountain Giant costs six mana. Well, so well, I think you played it. You played a Drake for the sole reason that. Um, you don't you don't have to taunt yet to taunt the Dracos in case he comes out. That's so the the reason. And the Drake can actually contest the Tank Master. Yeah, that's also the thing. It feels like a big Drake here is way better to trade with the opponent's board. That's why I would go for the Twilight Drake here. And Luther agrees, he sets up a four seven Twilight Drake. Nimsh on the other hand draws into Doctor Boom. That's a nice play on turn seven. But now I, I could even imagine that we see the Frostbolt and the Cogmaster being used to take out the 5-6 Ancient Watcher here. That being followed up by another Annoyotron. Then the question is, what's the, what does the Argent Protector do? Does he go face? Does he kill 2-2? Two two? Like, that's the only question this turn, right? I mean, like the Annoyotron Frostbolt ping is kind of given. The question is, what does the Protector do? Yeah, that's a question here. Maybe you're expecting Shadow Flame, you're expecting Hellfire. So maybe, well... I would maybe dread that Defender of Argus away to leave just the option with the Twilight Drake to use the Shadow Flame on that and the ball is then cleared for both players. I think you might actually run the 4-4 into it too, too. To bait the match removal so you can play the Dr. Boom next turn. But there he goes, he trades away the Defender of Argus, plays then the Neutron and will use his hero ability for uh, an additional damage to the face. Yep. And Lothar now, having six mana available here, he could go for the Mountain Giant, but drawing into Marganus, that's a very delicious Void Caller on the left of his hand here. Either hitting Lord Jaraxxus or Marganus. So he decides to go for it, and with Double Owl in his hand, you could also now go 
for a silence on the right Anitron. Yeah. Yeah, no, the left Anitron, because it's just BM. <laughs> <laughs> No, I definitely expect to see the all on the right in Neutron. And Or you could draw. You could draw, that's also a safe option. That Neutron is not a big threat here. The thing is if, he has if you draw if you draw you're dead to Fireball Frostbolt, right? You're on ten Yes, you would die to that. Yeah. So you Yeah, so you don't draw here as Lothar. The thing is, we will probably see uh, the Dr. Boom come out next turn here by Nimsh. Wait, did, did you use two Frostbolts or just one? Just one. Just one, right? Okay. Just one, and the big game hunter is then following up that Dr. Boom, like always. It's just so annoying that we never see Dr. Boom being played and, and like, fully taking over the game. Like, the, the, the thing is, like, what's awkward for Lofa here is that Nimsh, like, you know he has one spare part in hand, and you know he has two more cards that he didn't play, so those could either be burn cards or seven drops. You don't, you don't know, right? Exactly. Like, that's, a, that's why I think you can't tap there. <laughs> anyway, we see Dr. Boom entering the board. The Anointron will trade into the Iron Big Owl, and we even see the swing with the Tinker Town Technician to the face, bringing Lothar down to 12 HP. He draws into the Molten Giant, that's nice here, but he has no taunt up here. And this turn, I feel like you really have to take out the Tinker Town Technician. And for sure, Dr. Boom. You have to deny the most damage possible. I mean, it's easy, like you... Oh, do you want to kill off your White Call or not this turn? That's the question, right? The thing is, you can always use Lord Jaraxxus also for the heal up, and we do not see any antique heal what's being drawn here. So it's also tempting to keep that for the late game and heal up if it gets really close. Yep. I think the correct play was to run the Drake into the 4 4, then the 3 4 into a bomb, so you have a higher chance it actually kills the Void Caller. He leaves the bombs up, okay. Yeah, he leaves them up and... Which is not good because you still die to um, Fireball Frostbolt then. Exactly. But he's not playing around that. Mm. He, Nimish now has the Archmage and Tinnitus. You could even go for a second spare part by playing the Tinker Town Technician and setting up a, a huge turn here with Archmage. You could already go for one Fireball and hope that you draw into the second Fireball. But the question is, if you use the reversing switch this turn, what are you going to use it on? Mm, probably... On a Molten Giant. <laughs> <laughs> and like... Tardy, you're such a troll. No, I'm not a troll. Like, I mean, like, you, you don't want him to have two fours. It's just the four twos, I don't know, like, you have to think it down. Nah. You reduce his damage and just draw for burn, like you still use it on, on the VGH or, or the Drake, I guess. But would you go in this situation, would you go for the Tinker Town or would you already play Archmage? Because you're setting up a nice Archmage next turn with the second spare part and you would... Like now, Lothar is on 12 HP and by two, by having two fireballs you're just uh, threatening lethal damage. But there are also, there's also the chance of the bombs hitting. I like that play. Why? <laughs> Why do you like, like, that like play? this? No, no, no. You have one fireball, right? He's on ten. If he doesn't have feeling, a frostball top take, a fireball top take is lethal, right? Exactly. Like you don't expect your Archmage to survive that turn. Um, Never. Plus, the fireball. Like if one bomb hit phase for, th for three, still lethal, even if you low faps here. Even if he low faps here, but drawing that low fap is maybe crucial uh, because I, as expected, probably that Archmage and Thanatos is not going to die. But the thing, this turn now, you're one turn away from using Lord Jaraxxus for a heal up. Do you really want to trade away your your Void Caller here? Because hitting the Morganus actually is good because then you are invincible. I think you have to. But if you hit Lord Jaraxxus, that's not too good. Well, then next turn you just play Morganus. Yeah. I mean, like... But I'm it's next turn, and now I you're... I, I think this turn is probably... Um, you all want the bombs, probably. You... 
You definitely play Lothab this turn, so yeah. that's a no-brainer. You're preventing double fireball with that. Like, you all one of the bombs, then the um, the PGH and the Void Caller kill the Undenitis. And Let's bring 4A damage to the face. Yeah, I would also like that trade here. Taking out one bomb, swinging to the face. He even leaves the bomb on the fa on the field. Actually, the chances of hit hitting uh, of the bomb hitting the face are pretty low here. Well, it's it's a pretty easy turn, right? <laughs> <laughs> Why that? Well, the only out is to <laughs> the bomb for the face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, how much damage is Lotha representing on the board here? That's ten. That's seventeen. Yeah, that's that's lethal damage on the board. So. It's like you cannot fireball board here, like then you then you just lose anyway you throw the game. Yeah, it feels like that. Even uh, especially when we are looking at Lothar Sand here with Lord Jaraxxus and Marganis. I mean, I have legal spotted here. You kill the owl, you just want to the face. There easy. we go, and he hits. No. Nope. For one on the molten giant. That's not what you want here. That's definitely not what you want. Uh, so now the follow up is uh, concede. <laughs> There's still lethal damage on the board, so... Yeah, like, you have to fireball, like... Something needs tinkering? But then there are no outs for next turn, so... Yeah... Well um... Yeah, just a move of desperation here, Nimsh is uh, putting some minions on the board. Maybe he did not even calculate what Lothar has on the board, but it's lethal damage, even that Magan is coming in, or Lord Jaraxxus <laughs> adding another damage uh, to the board. And there we go, at least Malganus enters the board, a nice card to see, yeah. and Lothar goes up in that series, 2-0. Yeah, that, that was missed, you faced Rex as PM. I don't, I don't like that. You yeah. don't like that, okay. Yeah. You have to talk to Lothar after the series. I will, I will. And really tell him, oh my god, what did you do? Anyway, another nice game here by Lothar. He's going strong. He's going really strong against them here. Yeah, like, like lately, like, I'm impressed. Like you're impressed, did no, you? No, like Lofer, like even at the Xfinity, he beats a each round one. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, I'm impressed. And Nimsh, on the other hand, he is facing elimination here, so he's behind 2 0. His only chance is to win the next games, but we are already ready to jump into game number three, and we will join the players Lofer against Nimsh. So let's see. Hunter. Yeah, Hunter is the only class left here for Lothar. He's going up against Nimsh's Druid. Actually, that's an interesting choice. I would have expected Nimsh to go up with the Warrior against... It doesn't really matter. I think, he, yeah, I, I think he knows the deck list. So he has to win with all his three decks anyway. He has to win with all the three decks, but we were talking about it yesterday so much that it might come down to the point where you can maybe set up with choosing the good matchups first, because you can choose them. You're setting up a 2-2 maybe, and then... Maybe Lothar gets nervous because then it's 2-2 two -two again and it's the next game deciding and that puts on pressure on the ma uh, on the players because it's an offline event and mind games do actually matter here. Oh well. To some people they do, uh, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. But Toyda, you're, you're not a player that gets influenced by mind games. You're just playing straight your line. Of course. Like, I mean, like, nah, I don't think you should get... That's the thing, like, people... When, when I watch those players, they never watch each other. I, 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 I have no idea why. You get so much information from that in an offline event. Are you always looking your opponent of in course. the eyes? Of course. Just it's his, his, his whole turn. Okay. Oh. Yeah. Actually, so you should know about those mind games because you're using them. It's, so not, it's not a mind game, it's just reading them. It's like an open book yeah. most of the time. Are you a poker player? Do you play poker? Yes, and I've played Magic before, so I. It's where you learn those reads. Yeah, that totally makes sense. Anyway, Nimsh has uh, the zombie chow in his deck, so he prepared a, li a little bit here for aggression. Lothar, on the other hand, doesn't look at that board. Yeah, that, 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 that snake trap was scary. Snake trap, very scary. Two leper Nimshes on the board. <laughs> <laughs> He's calling them that. He's, yeah, I know. He's Nimshing Nimsh. <laughs> oh. You could already think about double innervate into Ancient of Lore. Just for but like like Nimsh is sitting there and he's like my kingdom for a swipe. Time waits for no one. We see the state of Nexramus come down here. 
Uh, even before he attacks, uh, I would say that's a mistake because you can you already be sure that it's no <laughs> explosive trap? <laughs> Um, I don't Do know. Did you check the time before? Uh, I don't know if he checked for that before, but if you're not <laughs> sure about that and then well, you play your shade before... Good read then, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> if you do it like that. But anyway, it was no explosive trap, so the shade luckily survives here for Nimsh. Oh, it's going to be a race. Like, the Nimsh is saying, I don't give a fuck. I will just go face. Exactly, but with that explosive trap and all the pressure lining up here for <laughs> for the Hunter, I don't really see that working out. Look, there's another hit on the zombie chow. Even now, if you attack, you heal up your opponent for five. So the race is definitely running in Lothar's favor here. And Nimsh not drawing into the, the swipe. swipe. The swipe is not showing up. And that's a very crucial card here. Like in game one, Nimsh desperately needed the brawl. Now he desperately needs the swipe. What can you even... It feels so awkward. You do have the big game, Hunter. You do have a White Grove. White Grove is now... It feels like, okay, turn four, it's too late, so stay in the deck, please. Big game, Hunter. Uh, no value. It's just another 4-2 on the board. <laughs> He's in a terrible spot. Even now, if you use the Ancient of Lore this turn, you play your second Innervate with just one mana value. So I, don't know, I, I don't know. I like Druid is such a weird spot. Like I don't know if they're like you have to start trading now. You, you can face rush me anymore. And let's see what the snake trap hits because the knife juggler will go for three juggles. The first one hits the shade of Next Ramas that is still in stealth mode. The second juggle okay. hits the shade of Next Ramas that is not in stealth mode. And the third juggle goes once again to the four two shade now. Yep. And like that, he can't even go face this turn. Because he would die to the explosive trap. So oh I guess my. racing time is over for the druid here. Uh, he goes to kill all the beasts. Yeah, he wants to deny the kill command for 5 damage. Nimsh goes for the wild grove here. Wow, that abusive sergeant is actually perfectly fitting the curve here. He needs a miracle. <laughs> He's so low already. Two Lepernums with the EOS being on 8. That's just crazy. Even Well, you can still draw into... Into the swipe, if you draw this turn, and then next turn you can heal up with the Ancient of Lore, but it's looking so grim. Mm -hmm. What do you actually wrath? Yeah, that's a good question here. Maybe you wrath the Haunted Creeper, or, well... Um, I think you... Well. You have to draw a swipe. Is there even a way to survive? Draw swipe, I don't know. Draws an Azure That's Drake. not gonna help. Nimsh says, uh, Thank you, Azure Drake. You're also not helping me out here. So, going for double Innervate, probably, and then heal up with the Ancient of Lore. I guess that's your only chance to, to get something. It's a losing play. And it's the only play. <laughs> yeah, it's survival mode. Yeah, I think. Sometimes it still happens in like. 5% of the games, if you just manage to survive and you stay long enough into that, then there's this, that miraculous point where somehow you manage to get a comeback. But, well, that's maybe less than 5% of the games when you're so far behind here. He trades into the Mad Scientist, which does not spawn a secret because there is just one snake trap and two explosive traps in the face, Hunter. Yep. Nimsh drops down to 11 HP. Wow, and there's the kill command here for Lothar. And that means he's one off lethal this turn. Yep, and there's an explosive trap up. So the Ancient of Lore is not going face here. Yeah, there's a Leper Gnome. There's the explosive trap. So I would love to see just uh, the Force of Nature run to face and everything gets, gets wrecked. Uh, he draws another Wrath. Well, mm, that's all not going to help him. It's time for the Doku. <laughs> it's time for Sudoku. Huh? There you go. He says, well played, and Lothar will take this serious. 3-0 here. So he's the better pole. Uh, I wouldn't say that. It's still half stone, you know. It's yeah. still half stone. Anything can happen. Yeah, I, I feel for Nimsh. Like, he, has, he didn't have the, the best draws there. Yeah, if Nimsh had the brawl in the first game, that might have taken another outcome. And yeah. overall, he did not have a swipe this play. So I would not say one of those players is better than the other player. No, but no, no. 
No, Toyota would never say no, that. No, it's just common for Nymph for beating me. Oh, okay, so you're still a bit... Okay. No, I know, I'm fine. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, thank yeah. you for watching. That's it with Group B of today. It's, B. It was the second group stage. After a short break, we will be right back, so stay tuned and see you.